Hello and welcome to episode 75 of the Critical Twits Gaming Podcast, where today we'll give you some of the insider information we received from Modiphius about Fallout, Wasteland Warfare and Star Trek Adventures. Welcome back, I'm Aaron Ravinsky and today on my continuing, hopefully not five year mission of sitting here talking to a microphone of my own, I will be again introducing you to one of the interviews we conducted at the UK Games Expo. Uh, this week we will be going through um, some information we got from Chris at Modiphius, who was very nice and gave us an interview um, talking about Fallout, Wasteland Warfare, uh, an upcoming uh, miniatures wargaming uh, thing. Uh, using Fallout's universe and um, models and factions and, st- and things like that, and uh, Star Trek Adventures, and I was going to say upcoming RPG series, but they have officially released it now, um, and you can get their starter pack on their website and from uh, select retailers as well. But now I'll pass you over to Chris and myself and Brian, oddly enough, um, who will give you some more information on these wonderful things. So thank you for uh, for talking to us. That's um, right. Now, Modiphius is probably, I would say, our favourite game publisher. Yes, um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> which we've said on, on multiple podcasts before, um, because of uh, the fact you publish uh, Mutant, yeah. yep. which is one of our, our favourite games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you publish uh, Mindjammer, which yep. we, we've played, um, and you always seem to have something new coming out, yeah, something shiny I, that I want to I get, play. We're quite good at finding great games mm. uh, that people are making, and we, we look for beautiful design great gameplay great artwork um, and usually something I like because if I'm going to work at the weekend on it then it has to, can't be something I don't like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, life's too short um, so yeah so we've built up quite a nice family of partners that we help it's you know it's usually where they don't want to have to get into all the nitty gritty of distribution yeah. shipping sea freight here and there and yeah. having to market it and we can help promote them uh, and, and really push their games and, and get them into the market and they can focus on making even better games yeah. and then of course we do our own stuff and you know we've got lots of stuff we're really passionate about but we've been yeah that's how we've grown really quickly just by just finding other people with great games and building a little crew together yeah it start, was it just you to start with me and Rita my wife that uh, started in 2012 doing Acting Cthulhu PDFs and then in 2013 we did the Kickstarter for Acting Cthulhu yeah and I, cause I still had a you know, I had a job as creative director I'd started this fashion label called Joystick Junkies mm. uh, back in 2001 and uh, so I'd been running that and I was pretty bored of it <laughs> And uh, so it was time to move on. So it was like really good timing. And the Kickstarter for Acting Cthulhu was such a big success that we had to go full time. And I, I didn't regret it. <laughs> it was uh, perfect. So, and then, you know, we've just grown it from there. We've not tried not to, whilst you, you've probably seen that we've done a big Kickstarter every year, yeah. we're not reliant on the Kickstarter. So yeah. we've worked really hard to sell, you know, into stores. So we have quite an important market selling you know, games into retailers and distribution and promoting it beyond the Kickstarter. Yeah. And often, you know, like Mutant, we didn't run the Kickstarter for Mutant, it was uh, Free League and or Free League. So they came to us, you know, with, could you sell the game off to Kickstarter? So it's like, yeah, great. So that's a really important part of the business because, you know, Kickstarter is brilliant when you've got a very expensive project to fund. Yeah. Um, but it's not everything we, we did airfix battles and dust adventures without kickstarter and now we're doing fallout and star trek without kickstarter yeah uh, i mean luckily they're big enough yeah, <laughs> yeah. That they shouldn't really need it so um you know we're really fortunate to have that opportunity to work with such mentally big brands yeah they're, they're huge yeah um. they are really <laughs> huge i mean if, I, if you'd said to me like you know 2012 well you know in a few years we'll be doing Star Trek I'd be like get lost <laughs> ridiculous because it's you know it's been a childhood dream to, to to work with Star Trek you know I grew up watching yeah. William Shatner rocking around the galaxy kissing he, he aliens the, he is the best captain right yeah yeah I mean, he was no, he's what you grow up with you know so um, yeah, I, always, I mean I still love Captain you know Captain Picard who doesn't love an Englishman, you know, uh, with a stately Shakespearean 
voice yeah. uh, taking control of the enterprise is you know brilliant. But um, you know, I, I, like I said, grew up with Shatner and Spock and you know everyone, and uh, you know that I was a kid. It was before I watched Star Wars. Star Wars, like obviously, I watched it when it first came out in 1977, which shows how old I am. But uh, and that was you know it was nothing like it before. But even you know Star Trek was that regular dose of sci-fi and I dreamed of being a starship captain you know yeah so Star Trek Adventures is an RPG yeah that's right and we're also doing a line of miniatures so there's um, sets of eight figures for uh, Klingons Romulans next generation crew original series crew that uh, in the first wave there'll be Ball Cardassian a set of away team which is different alien races in Starfleet uniforms and all sorts of others uh, deck plans for the ships uh, like geomorphic floor plans so you can make up any kind of thing you want oh, I, that's very cool. I, I can see people picking that up just for those yeah, yeah I mean not. I mean, the, the system isn't a miniatures based system whereas like Savage Worlds is really good with miniatures it's Star Trek Adventures is not a system that needs floor plans and miniatures a lot of people like to have miniatures a lot they haven't yeah. really been um, you know uh, hobby miniatures since uh, I think it was Grenadier did them like you know in the in the eighties. Yeah. And you've had you know the re- you know really nice pre-painted Heroclix minis, but quite a limited range. So it's you know so there's a huge demand for just really cool uh, unpainted miniatures so people can paint them up. And we're also doing in the uh, one of the supplements is a, a very stripped down version of the role playing rules, so you can play quick battles, yeah. quicker like away team encounters, and um, that you'll also be able to download that for free when it comes out in the summer Excellent. so um, we're trying to appeal to the whole audience yeah I saw um, pop up recently the the big box set that yes the four goes... cube yeah <laughs> and it, I mean basically that was like okay we love doing collector's editions so let's just go mad what is the maddest thing we could make and let's do it because it'll be so popular and he's like well okay four cube right so it's massive it's insane it's got all these different compartments it's got like a tray for your miniatures it's got um, all the miniature sets all three dice sets because there's all three colours of the dice sets it's got the collector's edition book it's got this double sided map it's got um, more stuff that we're not announcing yet until StarTrek.com announces it this week so um, it's this kind of Ferrari of of role playing games (laughs) all cubes shall be assimilated (laughs) <laughs> and um, uh, so yeah and, and of course they'll, there's, we'll be releasing I mean on Thursday when it comes out um, so vote Starfleet of course um, so forget about the election um, there's um, you know the basic book the, the collector's edition there's the dice miniatures etc all available uh, oh yeah the Borg Cube comes with this gigantic Borg Cube screen as well which has got like the sides are slightly damaged uh, it's, it's, it's massive, it's gigantic, so um, it's really fun. So there's a, there's a lot for people to choose from. Uh, and then we're going to be delivering in August, and uh, we'll be on sale at Gen Con for the first time. And then, you know, there'll be more books as like Operations, Sciences, and Command Division books coming okay. out, which is kind of more options for character creation. If you just want science characters, or if you want more focused adventures based around science or Command, Command Division book will have more ships science division book will have more on giant space alien weapons and all those giant things that seem to head towards earth all the time (laughs) blow it up and uh you know entities like q you know like mad science and um uh then there's like quadrant books like the alpha quadrant beta quadrant and the book the main book has a lot of information on that but these books will give you a lot more detail uh more more playable alien races and, and then we've got lots of adventures coming, lots of guest adventures uh, as PDFs, a big adventure book called These Are The, These Are the Voyages, Volume 1. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff. And it's, it's a different approach to Star Trek because, let's face it, we've, you know, if you've got a Star Trek previous role-playing game, or if you're a fan, you've probably got enough books that tell you the timeline of the universe, yeah. that tell you what Starfleet is and blah 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 and there's no point me writing all of that so what we've done instead of a timeline you've got a whole load of a chapter that's made up of data pad entries of 
a Klingon secret agent embedded in Starfleet okay. reporting on this event in the timeline. Excellent. A um, Vulcan ambassador's report of meeting a Starfleet captain. Yeah. A, a, I remember reading one, there's Captain Kirk sending a message to another captain of a constellation, constellation class ship that's lost the ship in the story in the timeline saying hey Jim or whatever you know this you're gonna get a lot of hassle you know people are gonna accuse you it's your fault um, you're gonna blame yourself but don't you know you were the captain at the time it was you know you had to make that decision so you're getting this personal tour of the universe yeah, yeah. from everyone's yeah. perspective yeah. And um, it's a much different style because, you know, our whole pitch has been Starfleet needs a new crew. It's your turn to take yeah. the helm. Um, and in the in the the book, we've set it in, I think it's 2371, just before the Dominion War starts. Yeah. If you've watched the movies, the Enterprise is about to crash again. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and so there's a big hole in Starfleet. They need a lot of new crews, that, you know, they're gearing up. So it's a very serious approach. So you imagine going around in the book, you're getting briefings from captains, from admirals. Yeah. This is, this is what it's like, it's real serious time. So it's not a kind of, hey cadets, this is what it's like to be in Starfleet. It's like, okay, you're about to, here's the keys to the ship, yeah. get out there, see you in five years, you know. Yeah. So uh, it's all down to you. Sounds really interesting. Sounds sounds good. Um, yeah, you've also got Fallout there. Yes. Um, yeah. Which has I've seen seen pictures. Yes. Um, and again, a big a big license. Yeah. I mean, it's been insane. We've just been bombarded ever since we announced it and kind of blew people away. It was I think it was the day before Salute, big war game show. We just had this queue of people going, "Where is it then? Have you got it? What about it?" It's like, no, we just told people about it yesterday, <laughs> and uh, it was just ridiculous and. Um, really passionate it's basically a it's a miniatures war game so it's like Warhammer you've got to paint the figures assemble the figures we've made them as simple as possible because I hate having to balance a figure on this base it's they come with you know the feet have got plugs into the base it's really simple there's two or three parts of max um, beautiful miniatures all in resin very high quality resin it's 32 mil scale which is basically 20 mil heroic scale so yeah. it's, it's in line with all the other ranges I mean it's the same scale as our Star Trek miniatures are John Carter miniatures so um, you know it's very familiar they've all got scenic bases and it's a um, 3 to 30 miniature scale game so okay. if you like Necromunda Mordehine those kind of crew building style games it's going to have that sort of uh, flavour there's a starter box with about 10 12 figures in to get you going with all the rules and dice and everything you need yeah. and then you choose which faction you want to build, build a, you know, buy the Brotherhood of Steel expansion pack that gets you another 10 Brotherhood of Steel figures or 10 Super Mutant figures, and that, that grows the game. So in the bat-based game, it gives you a few solo cards. You can play solo against the game, or we could play co-op okay, against the game. We could take a few characters each and play co-op against the Super Mutants. Um, you can have uh, AI creatures popping up if you buy the different creature packs like the Deathclaw or Rad, uh, Rad Scorpions or whatever. You can have all sorts of creatures popping up. And there's settlement building. So in the background you can be picking, you know, do I want to have a, a workbench for weapons or maybe for armor in my settlement? That will give me unlock more gear on the battlefield. Okay. Um, and as you ex grow your crew, you get access to more perks. You can develop, get add more crew. And so what we could play is a game where you, t you know, you two could just take a couple of characters each and I could have a whole, like, 30 super mutants. And if you take the characters, you get access to advanced rules. They get more abilities, they can do more cool stuff. Um, whereas the kind of grunt squads are just run around and shoot. They, they can interact with the scenery as well. Yeah. We've got searching, you've got to hack computer consoles, you can interact with a nuka cola machine see what you can find inside yeah. um, you can search the terrain maybe there's some a buried robot you know buried synth um, that you need to recover so you've got to search around it be careful what you might find so yeah. um, so there's different levels to the game you know whether you want to play solo do you want to play an exploration game or do you actually want to play a battle against each other or co-op yeah. you could be you guys could be playing against each other 
and there's an AI series of creatures that's just going to pop up and muck around with your game. You know, yeah. Yeah. it's all fun. And another thing, because I played war games since I was a kid, and I always miss. You get lots of missions, but they're usually kind of pretty standard. And I wanted a very narrative missions, so we've got that as well. So there'd be like a series of missions coming out online, that are free to download, as well as expansion packs that give you a whole narrative storyline based on inspired by the games, yeah, video yeah. games. And there's a big ca- expansion box, campaign box that introduces actual base building. So you could say, right, I'll build a base that's a thousand caps and you, you could attack him. And then you go, well, it's a bit like tower defense. What will I do this time? Uh, maybe I'll have more turrets and a bit less figures, a bit less miniatures, but I'll have a load of traps. And so you can try different strategies and see what works. Or you can be narratively building your base as well. So there's kind of different levels and tournament play is going to be big. So we're going to be running a lot of tournaments around the world. So it's, it's, it's a big project, as you can imagine. It yeah. sounds huge. It it sounds is. And we're kind of gradually building. It's not all coming out to start with. It's, yeah. We're giving people a, t- a taste and then all the way through Christmas, New Year, there'll be a lot of you know, new releases. So. And that goes on pre-order in uh, July and it's going to come out in November. Just quick turnaround stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing yeah. I'm liking both about the Star Trek adventures and, and the four of them is that flexibility. As you said, you've got all these other options. Yeah. So, like, having science missions in Star Trek or yeah, yeah. I mean, traditional Star Trek. It's definitely, I mean, let's face it, a lot of people are going to get in their ship and just run around and shoot everything. Yeah. But <laughs> if you are more worried about the yeah, Prime Directive, which you should be, yeah. then, you know, a lot of the missions highlight problem solving together yeah. they highlight yeah. um, you know using science they highlight um, you know character interaction like you know when you create your characters you come up with these values that are very important to you so yours might be the prime directive is never wrong yeah. ever yeah. and yours might be all Klingons are evil you know <laughs> just need to die and so of course as a GM I'm like okay we're gonna have a mission where you got to save the Klingon and technology is definitely not going to save you. <laughs> it's, it's always fun to mess around with that. And, you know, and also there's lots of guidance on introducing subplots. You know, Star Trek missions are very much, there's always two levels to it. There's the big story and there's the, the, love, the love story in the background or the argument between the characters. And it really, the system really lets you bring in those um, stuff going on between characters. And um, also... Uh, what happens when you go on an away team like if you go on a away team and we're stuck on the ship do we have a boring game no because you've got secondary characters and the, the ships have crew points so when we if you if you go off an away team we, uh, the two of us go well I will create I'm going to create a security engine to go with him you will go okay I'll create a uh, m- medical officer yeah so we create those out of the crew points and at the end of the, and so whilst when it all kicks off on the planet, we get to be involved. And you, meanwhile, create a, 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 uh, uh, an officer on the crew, on the bridge, so that when things kick off with the Klingon battle cruiser, you get to take part in that part of the game as well. Yeah, and at the end of the session, you can just, those just characters just go away, they go back into the crew points. They were like extras on the, on the TV show. Yeah. But we can bring them back, because you do record their information. If you bring them back, then you get to grow them as characters. Yeah. yeah. Now suddenly they've got a credit. <laughs> They're a named character. It's Dave, the security officer, is back again. <laughs> the red shirt gets taken. Yeah. Off. Fan, yeah. fan favorite. Yeah. And if yeah. for some reason you die in a mission, then you can take on one of these characters and grow yeah. that. So you become attached to them. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's just, sounds very cool. And it, again, the narrative elements and Fallout universe it sounds awesome. It's, I'm saying with the Mirage's games. Like, I love playing the Mirage's games, but I, I'd like a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like having that option there, when I want that more. Yeah, yeah. 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 And for me as well, solo gaming is really big because when I grew up as a kid, I didn't always have my brother around who was also into games or, you know, there wasn't anyone in my hometown that was into war games. So yeah. I, I just ended up writing my own solo war game rules. Or I got really good at pretending not to know what myself was thinking about doing next turn and I'd just <laughs> play against, you know, myself. And uh, so I thought we've really got to have a good, really solid um, solo activation system. And I want to be able to just, I mean, our very first mission is uh, the sole survivor finding dog meat yeah. and having to fight a couple of creatures. And it just teaches you the rules. 
and then the next one is you and Dogby now try and find a gun, better gun, yeah, or something else, or, or Preston Derby, for example. So it's going to teach you the rules, but it's also going to teach you with solo play, or, or you can play joint. But I, I want to be able to play missions where I can just take a couple of characters out and just explore the wasteland, yeah, and find some caps to be able to spend on more gear and grow and grow from one guy and his dog or girl and his dog to a whole crew of 30 and with a whole settlement you know and see that process and feel like I that's my team you know yeah so. yeah I, I love a campaign yeah. I, grew, I grew up playing Necromunda yeah. where you'd have yeah. your gang and your dude exactly. would become leader yeah. in 15 games yeah, time yeah. And, and if your if your character t- uh, uh, character death in the war game is you know it is something if you're building up that character you know it will there is a risk of death of course and you know if you die in the battle there's a chance you have you're just wounded and but if you die you can then promote one of your other characters up to be leader yeah and you get you know you get to spend some of the perks abilities on them in a new way and then you know carry on you don't have to start right from scratch again you could do if you want but well, maybe that's the fun of it you know so yeah but it's like what you've got this crew and like they get the first yeah you know once you're invested in that community and everything so yeah yeah. Awesome. Does that fill you up for the foreseeable future then, or have you got even more things <laughs> in the distance? There's always more things. Yeah. <laughs> We're modifious, aren't we? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you have to, as a business, you know, we, we employ about 15 full time people now, uh, you know, about eight, nine in the office, and others work remotely. But we've got about 100 freelancers, like artists, writers, um, uh, you know, designers, uh, editors, uh, and they're not all full time, but they they do a lot of work for us. So I have to think how you know, and it's one thing people often think, oh, you know, you haven't finished that Kickstarter yet. You know, why are you doing another project? It's like, well, I know that in six months that's finishing, and the guy who's our designer won't have any work. So what am I going to say? Sorry, mate, I've got to let you go. There's no work for you. Yeah. So I, I I always have to think a couple of years ahead. So. Yeah. Fallouts. Obviously, I hope for that's going to keep going. Star Trek will keep going, but you know we have a lot of projects uh, that are going, like Conan and Music Chronicles and things. So when you, you know, when that, maybe you do a new edition or you need to think of new projects that that will keep people employed. So so yes, there are always projects. We've definitely got enough to keep us busy for the moment, and uh, you know we've got a new edition of some games coming next year. So we're you know making the most of those and uh, you know we've got Thunderbirds selling to the end of this year and then that will probably be the end of Thunderbirds so it's you know we've got Captain Scarlet coming yeah. at the end of this year which is a fun project we're doing internally because uh, I love it was my favourite of the Jerry Anderson shows yeah. I just, I just want to have a game with loads of little plastic SPVs. You know, that's, that is the sole design constraint. It has to have lots of plastic SPVs. So, um, and that's what you get to do is, you know, when you've got a games company, you can do the thing that you most want, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we, you know, we are growing. We're just going into a bigger office. And it means we can do better games. We can employ better designers and... Uh, and look after you know we're really big on looking after our staff and it's a real family atmosphere and you know when it was started me and Rita it was a little you know it was our family and now it's a big family but we try and really look after people and that's we grow because people want to work for us as well so yeah I was going to say every year we've, we've seen you guys over here with Dragon Meat which is yeah. also we've seen more and more people with the teams and turning up and they're always yeah. excited every year even, even the ones who've been yeah. themselves <laughs> themselves. Yeah, you could easily see people get burnt out with stuff like this, which would be perfectly reasonable. It is, you're not, yeah. You still got that sort well, of passion there. I'm a big, like I said, I'm a big believer in only only do games that you actually like. Yeah. <laughs> I and mean, I've been offered a lot of games, and I, sometimes I'm like, yeah, it's okay, but I know that we're all going to end up working long hours on it because you do. Because yeah. it's if it's something you love, you do. Yeah. And but if you're not 100 percent about a game, and you can tell, I'm always really passionate about the stuff I do, and lot of the guys you know and make sure they work on something they really like you know and um, you know we're lucky to have some really exciting games and there's no point in having something that you're just not really excited about yeah so because you won't do a good job you know yeah thanks a lot <laughs> thank you very much yeah it's all right yeah cool. thanks guys 
Well, I'd just like to extend a quick thank you to Chris for taking the time out to talk to us. Um, it's very interesting and has made me very excited for both games. Um, and that's everything for this week. One of our shorter episodes. Shocking. But we'll, we'll be back again next week and uh, with more episodes to do with uh, things we found at the Expo. Um, Joe will be continuing with his uh, Netrunner coverage and we will continue releasing our indie game uh, videos, our unboxings, um, and various other bits and pieces over the upcoming time, including some reviews that we'll be hopefully getting out to you um, soon. Um, if you enjoyed that, please uh, like and uh, subscribe and share with your friends. Let people know. Um, if you know somebody else interested in Fallout or Star Trek, uh, bung it their way. Let them have a listen because um, Chris put it better than we could, to be honest. And yeah, just a final thank you to you guys for listening to us. Uh, bye.